Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome uh, to this uh, webinar organized by the Erasmus Plus uh, Virtual Exchange Initiative. The webinar is uh, dedicated to the Polish uh, higher education and youth uh, communities. Uh, so we are organizing this in collaboration with the Polish National Agency. Thank you very much to the team for helping us uh, reaching uh, universities and youth organizations. Uh, just uh, one um, housekeeping note uh, before giving the floor to Anna for the opening from the Polish National Agency. Now, this webinar will last around one hour and uh, the, um, the idea is to have, uh, following this, uh, the welcome, uh, um, some notes about the initiative and especially some information about the upcoming opportunities. So what can you really already start doing and now you can start joining the, the activities of uh, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, and then we have some time for questions and answers, and the plan is to finish for by, by four o'clock. Um, please use the chat if you have questions or comments, and at the end, uh, we will have time also for live questions in case of need, but for any, for any question, please use the chat, and we are gonna keep up uh, with, uh, with uh, the responses to you later. The webinar is being recorded, uh, so if some people can, are not able to attend now, uh, you'll be able to share it with, with them and with your colleagues later. Uh, without further ado, I'm giving the word uh, to the representative of the Polish Erasmus Plus National Agency for a quick welcome. Anna, please. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Pavlovich. I'm the program manager uh supervising the erasmus plus youth sector within uh, the foundation for the development of the education system which is the polish national agency of the erasmus plus program and i am happy to welcome all, all the participants uh, youth organizations and higher education institutions that we invited to join this webinar to explore the opportunities of the erasmus plus uh, virtual exchange uh, you can answer in chat because I'm very curious and we are all curious uh, within our Polish NA. How many of you have heard about the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange? Uh, because I hope that this webinar will be a chance for all of you uh, to learn about the opportunities that are provided by EVE. Let's call the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange EVE for uh, simplification. Uh, it provides really a groundbreaking way for young people to engage in the intercultural learning, which is the basis uh, of, uh, of our program and the values that we promote within Erasmus Plus Youth. I thank you for the comments in the chat. I see that some of you have heard about EVE. It's very good. I hope you learn some new things about EVE today. Uh, as you are, I think, all aware, um, young people, the internet, uh, in case of young people, plays a crucial role in their lives. Uh, it is both the source of an entertainment, of course, but also a powerful source of knowledge and education. Uh, and what I think that in this strange time of the COVID pandemic, uh, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange is a safe and accessible communication tool that you can use to explore uh, and facilitate further contacts with the partner organizations, uh, also for the potential of the future Erasmus Plus program. So please use this opportunity to listen uh, what the EVE team has to uh, say to you, uh, what tips they have to um, to communicate today to you, listen very carefully, uh, learn about the possibilities of Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, learn, of course, and then take action. So have a nice webinar. Uh, and without further ado, if you would like to contact me, uh, I put my data in the chat. Uh, so you have uh, my email, you have my telephone number, uh, because I leave you now in the, in the hands of this wonderful team of Eve because uh, I have to run to another Zoom meeting as we are programming, you know, the next phase of the Erasmus Plus program. And uh, within a few days, we are having a series of uh, meetings where we program uh, the new Erasmus uh, program also for the sake of 
of your organization. So listen carefully, learn, and uh, please contact me if you have some further information or questions that you would like to ask. I would like to welcome you to this webinar on behalf of the Polish National Agency. And I give the floor to uh, Fabio, I think, to yeah. run the <coughs> webinar. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you very much, Anna, for all the support and especially for remaining available even if now you have to run the most important thing <laughs> that you will remain, remain available if uh, uh, participants uh, or also other organizations from Poland will have specific questions. As I was saying before, feel free to then send us directly the difficult questions you might receive, but we will try today to give uh, as much information as possible. So thank you very much for for making this webinar happen. We are now 40 people online and uh, more should be coming. I see the numbers increasing, so we have a, a good number. And I see some of, some of you know about uh, EVE, about Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange, others don't. So forgive us if we, we will go a bit fast in the first part, uh, presenting you the initiative. The idea is to focus really on the practical opportunities and um, that, that will be open in the next months. So, uh, first of all, I want I would like to show you the what we call the hub, so the website of uh, the, the initiative. This is the address and basically everything that we're going to say today, you can find it there. So, there you can see on the top, uh, you can choose who you are, if you are a student or young person, if you are an educator for a university, if you are a youth worker, you can click there and you have different paths. You will see different opportunities appearing for depending on your on your role. And then uh, in the in the hub, remember, we will remind you also at the end to register to the newsletter. So you will get uh, news every time. Uh, every time you'll get uh, you will get, we will have some, uh, some news or some new opportunities. Now, uh, very quickly, what is Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange? Uh, it is a pilot project, a pilot initiative uh, funded by the European Commission, well embedded into Erasmus Plus program uh, that as you uh, might uh, uh, imagine in the last months uh, due to the lockdown and due to the uh, increased interest uh, about online activities, online teaching activity, has received uh, a lot of interest uh, by many participants, potentials, by many people. And actually, apart from uh, being a, 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 a learning activity, an intercultural learning activity that uh, students and young people can do online, the, the initiative has, uh, has two main goals. Uh, the one of uh, fostering mutual understanding. Actually, this initiative, as we, as we will show in a moment, has not only a European focus, but has a Euro-Mediterranean Euro focus. So eligible, uh, eligible organizations and participants can come from Europe and from the South Mediterranean. And also, uh, so the idea is to foster mutual understanding among these two regions, but also uh, to foster uh, skills development of young people. Uh, and we will hear in a moment uh, which skills we are talking about. It is a very ambitious initiative. We have a target of 25,000 young people uh, to be engaged in, this, in these three years. And it is implemented at the moment by a consortium that you can see uh, down in the slides. Uh, you can see all the, all the logos of the organizations that are implementing this initiative. As I was saying, the target participants are young persons within university or outside university um, of age between 18 and 30 years. So um, this is a rather strict limit we have. Uh, of course, uh, apart from uh, young people that can take part in the virtual exchanges, we also target uh, professors from universities, uh, international relation officers, educators, and youth workers that can act as uh, multipliers can take the different trainings we are providing and and so let's say it's the, the main target is the is this 18 to 30 but uh, there are possibilities also for other uh, for older uh, people not for younger people for uh, below 18 we cannot really accept any uh, participant and as you can see on the right side of the screen the the program is open to uh, Erasmus plus program countries as well as uh, South Mediterranean countries 
Now, in this uh, slide, you see a, a snapshot of uh, the exchange portal, that is the online portal where the synchronous sessions, the virtual exchange sessions take place. So what are these sessions? These are people-to-people -people real time dialogue. Imagine a, a facilitated, a professionally facilitated Skype session, but much more uh, learning oriented and especially sustained over time, meaning that uh, students or young people meet in these sessions for different moments in the, along a number of weeks. Uh, and, and they discuss a number of things, uh, they debate a number of things, as uh, we, we're going to get examples in a moment. But this uh, uh, image and this methodology, this uh, pedagogical methodology, is what all the activities that uh, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange is proposing have in common. So whatever activity you will decide to embark in, this uh, is uh, what your students will, uh, will experience. All the activities uh, that students or young people get engaged in are recognized through open badges. So the, the initiative is providing an open, it has produced an open badge ecosystem with these nice badges uh, connected to a list of competencies uh, so that uh, young people can uh, display them in their social profiles and curriculum. At the same time, as we will see later, universities especially, but also youth organizations are uh, encouraged to uh, accredit also, so to recognize the activities that students um, join uh, through uh, official credits within, in this case, the university, as we'll see later on. And finally, uh, these are just a couple of slides to show you that the program is, uh, is encountering a lot of interest. We, uh, we were able to engage uh, more than 20,000 people until March. We are reaching 24,000 now already end of June and uh, as you can see there the numbers are quite uh, are quite high there is a lot of interest from Poland I have to say we looked into the data before we uh, we don't have uh, uh, a lot of participation with respect uh, to the relative young population you have in the country so I think uh, we can do more in Poland and that's why we organized a specific webinar to to answer also to your to the questions you might have and especially the impact of these activities on young people is pretty positive. So you can see there that uh, the satisfaction rate is very high, the employability related skills are also part of the game, digital competence is improved, uh, teamwork and uh, collaborative problem solving skills are also uh, um, a kind of skill that uh, young people uh, confirm they have uh, been built through these activities. And so the, let's say, the experience of taking part in the virtual exchange is, uh, as we hear often by our testimonials, in some cases is an eye-opener, is a life-changing experience. It's really a, a strong experience in terms of uh, learning by, by, by the different young people. Last slide from me, uh, a bit of a structure of uh, the initiative. So the initiative is offering two kinds of activities uh, that we will hear in a moment from my colleagues. The first one are the ready-made virtual exchanges. So these are pre-designed virtual exchange experience where you as professor or as youth uh, worker have to bring your students or your young people for them to enjoy these activities. So in this case, in professors and young work and youth workers do not take part in these activities. So it, you are just an intermediary there. And we will hear in a moment about these activities. And then we have the trainings. The trainings are targeted to, in this case, uh, professors, international relation officers, and youth workers that want to either be become facilitators, and this is true also for young people, but especially want to be able to uh, develop their own uh, virtual exchange project. So apart from the ready-made virtual exchanges, we give also the possibility through these trainings to design and develop uh, uh, international uh, uh, collaboration projects based on virtual exchange. Now, I hope this was not too uh, much information already, but for uh, the, the important things to keep in mind is that uh, uh, all you don't need to be registered anywhere to participate. So all the activities are available to everybody. You don't need to be part. There is not a competitive process. 
all the activities are provided for free. The European Commission is uh, financing the, the work behind these activities. And uh, as we will hear now, we have a, a number of activities uh, that we have designed in order to accommodate uh, all the different uh, uh, preferences of, uh, of our stakeholders. I'm now giving the floor to Amani, uh, my colleague, uh, for, uh, to hear a bit about uh, the first kind of ready-made exchanges. Amani, please. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending uh, today's webinar. Um, I am one of the, um, the outreach persons working uh, in the consortium members. I work with Celia. And today I'm going to uh, give you, let's say, so, uh, like a brief idea on the ready made, uh, some of the ready made exchange and uh, virtual exchange opportunities that uh, you can have your students register in. So the first one is the social circles. Uh, now, the social circles is actually our lightest version of virtual exchange. Um, it's an entry point into virtual exchange. So this is a good opportunity to offer to uh, your students if um, you think that uh, they need like a, an intro um, kind of like opportunity. Um, it offers young people, um, let's say, the chance to sit together with people from various backgrounds um, who are all interested in participating in a series of these like online small group discussions um, and the um, duration of the program is 12 weeks and during these 12 weeks they will be meeting uh, synchronously twice um, in online live group meetings. Uh, they will be having some activities, some assignments um, during the course of those 12 days and the live sessions would actually be um, led by trained online dialogue facilitators. Uh, these are like experts um, who have uh, this intense, who have, have been through this intensive training to become um, facilitators. Um, now, during those 12 days, the participants will get to know each other asynchronously and also synchronously. So they will get to discuss the theme that is already announced for the social circles of the month. Um, and they should actually apply individually. So this doesn't run through. Um, a partnership uh, with the university per se, but rather uh, you should incite your, um, say, students or um, people uh, um, in the university or in the, the institution that you have to apply individually. So the professor does not have to apply, but the students do. Um, so if, as you can see here on this slide, um, the social circles are available in English, in French, and in Arabic. And each time, um, the students will have actually the, um, the, the chance to select the language that they would like to have. And the topic is announced in advance so that they are ready. And the topic is how to balance local culture um, and globalization. This would be the next one uh, that's going to be the round of August. And the deadline for application is the 19th of July. Um, so I think. Uh, uh, I can see a few questions, but I will get to those uh, later, right, Fabio? Yeah, as you wish, as you wish. I mean, okay. the, the main question was uh, only two meetings in the social circles, as you were saying, this is really yeah. the appetizer of the activity. So just feel free to answer when you want. Okay. So, yes, it's just two, uh, two let's say, um, synchronous uh, virtual exchange sessions, but as I said, this is the lightest version. So this is for um, a target group who doesn't have the timing maybe to uh, have like an integration and so on and so forth which is another option that i will talk about in a second um so uh moving to the connect program um now the structure is quite different from social circles uh, this is a program that is designed to be integrated into an existing curriculum or offered as a standalone course so it uses the proprietary online facilitated dialogue model, the same one, but this program tries to prepare the, um, let's say, the participants with the 21st century skills in a, let's say, more structured form. There is a curriculum, um, there are activities that are um, attitude-based based and skill-based. And um, the facilitators would, would try to work around uh, the attitudes uh, that the participants would be bringing to the virtual room. So they try to foster their empathy levels and their intercultural communication. 
um, it exposes them to different perspectives and um, to the key skills needed in this globalized workforce. Um, so the, yeah, these young people will meet with peers from different countries and participate in meaningful conversations and discussions around global topics. The topics would be um, varying depending on the module that the professor would be choosing. Um, so for example, we have like three modules, uh, Connect Global, an eight weeks module, Connect Collaborate, a five weeks module, and Connect Express, a four weeks module. Each module focuses on certain topics. So the topics can vary from um, social inequality and stereotypes, uh, religion, gender, politics, foreign policy. So it really depends on the module that the professor picks. Um, and again, these um, let's say sessions are going to be led by a trained facilitator. Uh, there are no third parties in, uh, allowed in the room and the application process happens through the uh, professor or the international relations officer. It has to be someone from the administration, not the, the students themselves. Um, what you should do is uh, use the link that I will provide in a second. And um, on the narrative, you have to uh, tell us how many students you would like to offer this opportunity to, what is the course that, they are that you are teaching, and uh, during which timing, because this opportunity is only available during fall and spring. Um, and the upcoming dates for the fall are 15th of October to 5th of December. And the deadline of uh, application is 30th of July. But you are free to apply. I mean, uh, we, um, we screen applications on a rolling basis. And um, if you cannot join us for the fall, we can have you uh, for the spring. I think I, uh, did I miss anything, Fabio? No, I don't think so. I just, uh, just wanted to add, uh, so uh, the, the idea here, if I put myself uh, in the shoes uh, of a university professor, so by the 30th of July, and I suggest to do this as soon as possible because it takes a few exchanges, I should contact uh, your, you, for example, Amani, or as we will hear in a moment, uh, Rawan for another ready-made, uh, similar but different uh, uh, possibility. And then uh, we, should ent we will enter into a discussion on how I, as a professor, could better integrate, could be best integrate this activity into my course, or I could offer it, uh, for example, even as a voluntary course uh, or as a standalone course, there are many options. And uh, for this, we don't go in detail here because everyone has a different, uh, has a different set of preferences. And then once uh, this is agreed, uh, the professor is providing to, uh, to Eve uh, the, the email addresses of the students. So, and then we take care of, uh, um, of, of the students. So what uh, answering to the question by Magda about uh, the usual timings, that depends. Uh, so students uh, give a number of uh, uh, slots when they can attend uh, these online meetings and then there is an algorithm that is uh, joining them. Of course, uh, uh, you, your, if you provide 20 students from Polish University, for example, they will be in 20 different groups uh, with, with other students than Polish students. So they will be with Italians, Tunisian, uh, Turkish, uh, German, and other students. And the group always stays the same, and the same group meets uh, every week uh, for, uh, in this case, for a week, eight weeks. Uh, and uh, together with these meetings, there is uh, asynchronous work. Uh, the professor is not participating in the, I'm just answering to the typical questions that comes up. The professor is not participating in the sessions, these are led by the facilitators, and the professor is receiving a, a feedback, a report at the end of the course on uh, the participation of his or her students in order to be able to grade it, right? Amani, did I say something wrong? No, uh, that's perfectly correct. So it's very structured. There is a curriculum, there is a feedback and coordination materials that are sent uh, on a rolling basis to the partners uh, who are like in this case, coordinating professor. Um, and if you would like to know more about uh, the content of each module, I have just listed a, a link on the chat box. You can click on it to see the different variations of modules. And if you're really interested, then you can uh, apply. Okay, that's much. perfect. So just to, just to explain, these, these ready-made programs have been designed in order to 
allow students either to join directly, like in the social circles, or to join as a classroom with the professor as a group, but without wanting to charge a lot of work, of course, on the professor who is typically busy and maybe normally doesn't know about this methodology. A similar but different thing is uh, the um, Cultural Encounters uh, online course uh, and for which I'm calling in uh, Rawan for an explanation on this. You will hear some similarities because the core methodology is the same but also some differences. Rawan, please. Well, thank you Fabio and thank you Amani and thank you everybody for um, joining the webinar today. So I'm Rwanda Tahboub and I'm representing here Sharing Perspectives Foundation, which is also uh, one of the organizations um, that are part of the consortium for the, vir uh, for the virtual exchange, so the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange. So uh, building on what Amani said, we have plenty of similarities, Amani and Fabio said actually. So we share the same pool of facilitators, uh, we share the same platform for the courses. But um, the difference between um, the culture encounters and the other ready-made courses is this one is more structured, which means you have your participants will have weekly materials that they need to, to uh, prepare before their sessions. So they have kind of a structure with already made materials that also professors can have a look at and know what are the main topics that their students are going to discuss. Uh, again, this this material is just like a main te uh, like a uh, mind teaser. So it's just food for thought that they can prepare for weekly uh, on weekly basis. They can can come up with extra readings and extra information that they want to discuss in their groups. Um, this course is more about a topical interactive online course uh, that has to discuss more about environment, politics, and uh, participation. So youth participation. Usually, our courses gives a space to participants to first reflect on materials and information that they receive. So they have um, assignments, pre and post assignments to reflect their understanding of the materials they had, the discussions that they had, and what they've learned on a weekly basis. Uh, also, we always have an interactive assignment where not only participants in the course have the opportunity to take part in this virtual exchange, but also they can engage their, um, their family, their friends, um, their societies in the uh, through these assignments. So those people do not attend the sessions, but they have, for example, in the assignments they can give their opinions. They can discuss with other peers through um, asynchronous ways of uh, doing the assignments. Um, this course is nine weeks, which means they are meeting on um, weekly basis. So for uh, for once a week, where they have they prepare for the sessions and they have the online sessions. Um, those are the same as Amani um, explained. So two hours per week where they have uh, different participants from different countries, different uh, institutions, uh, where they meet, they discuss their thoughts, and these, these sessions are uh, led by facil experienced facilitators. Then they do their assignments and discuss those together. Um, this course is more like social circles, so participants can sign up through institutions and they can sign up individually so they don't have to be uh, part of any institution higher, higher education institution or a youth organization if they want to sign up they just need to sign up through the link and if they're eligible they can take part in this course um, this course is only in english we used to have other courses in different languages but um, this one is in english and also this is an added value for participants uh, who are not native in english because they have the, uh, the opportunity also to um, enhance their English, uh, their English skills. This course starts in um, October, early October, but the deadline is in September. And if you're interested, you can always contact us on uh, partner at Sharing Perspectives Foundation, and we get back to you with all the needed information. I'm going also to list the link here for more information that you need from the hub. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there's, a, well, again, the question about uh, the role of the professor or of the international relation officer. So um, mm -hmm. maybe can you, can you reply through an example of a professor who was successfully able to integrate a course like Cultural Encounter in, uh, in his or her course? Do you have a story on this? Yes, so we have our partners in Limerick University who always take their the culture encounters series or courses um, to their students where 
their students take the course itself and then they have the final assignment that they submit to the um, to the professor and this way can they can get uh, five uh, credit points for this course um, other uh, other universities for example like Bethlehem University they take it as uh, audit for credit so if they have any electives that they, they prefer to have another course they can take the virtual exchange and it will be counted for them as the as the actual course um, other other opportunities or possibilities is that you can take it as the main assignment of one of your courses. So this is what I personally do with my students. I take the course and then I integrate it in an already course that I'm teaching them. And the main assignment is the virtual exchange. So if they pass the virtual exchange, they get a full, uh, a full mark on uh, that assignment. And this way they can have the opportunity to participate in an actual course as well as a virtual, uh, a virtual course. And, and how can the professor, I mean, I'm anticipating questions, how can the professor uh, check the, um, is the professor checking what is happening into, in the sessions? What are the materials? What is the level of, uh, I would say, control or quality control that the professor is, uh, is getting? So uh, the professor he receives a weekly uh, report on uh, his or her students. Uh, meaning that if they're participating or not, the uh, the quality of the participation, and uh, also if but they don't receive the actual assignment because of the GDPR, but then they can ask their students to submit a copy of all of these assignments to um, to the professor him or herself. So they receive a general information on a weekly basis from us, but they need to sign the MOU first with us. Then uh, they receive this um, this kind of information. They can also coordinate with the coordinator um, of the course and then they can receive extra information if needed. Perfect. Thank you very much. So you heard about two kinds of, well, three kinds actually of, of uh, ready-made exchanges. One is an appetizer, very short, two weeks, uh, the social circles. I think it's something good, I mean, uh, also to be promoted in general throughout the university as typically or, or the youth organization as an elective activity if somebody wants to take it it's still a nice opportunity something interesting the other two are one is uh, the second the last one is more content based so students are provided with more content with video with very nice uh, materials and resources before but still don't don't be uh, don't fall into the into the choice trap if you would go for example if you contact us for cultural encounters and we understand that uh, uh, the connect program would be more uh, suitable to your needs uh, you can then move there so it's uh, yeah we, we have developed different uh, slightly different activities in order to provide the different options but uh, it's uh, it's possible then to to move from one to the other now um, the benefits of joining an existing exchange what was said before here so before moving to the to the trainings we said that, that these are uh, uh, really strong uh, cross-cultural exposures, uh, exposing experiences. In many cases, uh, young people are actually talking with, uh, for example, people from the South Mediterranean with Muslim uh, colleagues for the first time in their life, also about some sensitive issues. So it is a really a strong cross-cultural experience. It is learner-led, so it is uh, learners decide what to talk about and and where to go actually and again importantly everything is taken care of including technical support by us so some uh, let's say the the professor of the university is not uh, is not does not have to worry about uh, about anything including the evaluation methods we have very nice rubrics and so on so this is this where the the existing the, the ready-made exchanges but Apart from that, we wanted to give the opportunity also to professors and, and uh, youth workers to design your own virtual exchange, especially in those cases where you are already working in collaboration with, with a partner or with more than one, and you would like to add a virtual exchange component to that uh, specific work. So we have two kinds of training opportunities. First of all, I would like to give the floor to Amani uh, quickly for uh, the, um, the facilitation training explanation. As you heard, facilitators are at the core of all the methodology. So we have designed the training for, for future facilitators. And then I'm giving the floor to Sara for the, the virtual exchange training. Amani. 
Yes, so uh, as I explained earlier, um, most of these virtual exchange opportunities are led by trained facilitators uh, who actually go through one of the programs that we offer, which is the facilitation training. Um, this is a training to provide, uh, let's say, mid-career professionals and people who actually uh, go through like this intensive interview phase to um, be sure that these are like the right uh, candidates to become uh, our future facilitators. We try to equip them with the best practices of online facilitation and communication. Um, they get this training um, to uh, know how to use the facilitation tools to manage the group dynamics uh, and also to manage the virtual rooms and the platform and to direct the participants. Um, they are taught to be not the center of knowledge, but rather those who moderate the session and make sure that the learning objectives are being met and that the activities are being run um, according to the right methodology and that respect is maintained um, and that the participants are encouraged to speak and to uh, interact with each other. Um, they will be, I mean, there, there are phases in the training. Uh, there's this first theoretical phase and then the hands-on uh, practice um, in leading uh, cross-cultural groups, actual groups. So they try to um, first uh, go through this first uh, like uh, theoretical phase and then they will practice um, a facilitation. Uh, so, and they receive the, the actual certification, which is endorsed by the UN after a one year commitment. Um, and um, they do actually get a, like an individualized feedback from the trainings um, because the training groups are really small for this advanced facilitation training. Um, now, as you can see on the slide, there are two formats. We have something called the Introduction to Dialogue Facilitation, which takes place over the course of four weeks, and uh, the Advanced Facilitation Training, which is uh, a 20 hours commitment. It can be uh, condensed in one month, or over the course of uh, 10 weeks. Um, now, it really depends on the profile of the applicant. So if the applicant has never done any teaching before, has never led any groups, has never uh, tried to, um, to um, let's say, they don't have any experience whatsoever in coaching or teaching or training, um, they would have to go through the introduction to dialogue facilitation and then they would have uh, access to the advanced training. So the, it's very, um, the selection process is very strict. Uh, we only accept, um, let's say, the right candidates, those who are motivated to do it. And it's currently available in English and Arabic and in French because we need facilitators in all these three languages. Um, so yeah, the, the, um, the future dates are, um, intro, I mean, for the introduction course are the 17th of August um, until the 14th of September. And for the advanced training, it's running uh, between the 9th of August until the 10th of September. So I think um, for the, um, the registration, you can do it, I mean, at your own uh, pace. We do screen applications on uh, a rolling basis. So the sooner the better. Um, and yeah, um, I think I said everything. Yeah, just to mention, uh, maybe, I don't know, Rawan, if you want, you have, you have a nice story because you started as a facilitator, right? You started by taking the, the as a participant in a virtual exchange and then as a facilitator, and this brought you to a career within a, a virtual exchange. Rawan, can you tell us a bit the story? Exactly, yes. So I started as a participant in 2013, taking one of the uh, courses that Sharing Perspectives Foundation offered. Then I got really fascinated uh, with uh, virtual exchange, so I wanted to go for the to become a facilitator. So I took the trainings of uh, so the facilitation training. Then I started my career there. So I started to become a facilitator, then a fellow, then a program officer. Um, now. So now I'm, I'm working with, um, with this career and I have also other colleagues who started as participants and working with other organizations in the consortium. The employability skills that we gain from the facilitation training uh, are like highly motivating, to, motivating also for um, hiring agencies to get those, uh, those skills and those people with these skills to work um, in their organizations. So uh, you have transversal skills, you have more um, tech, tech savvy skills, so more technology. Now there, there's a lot of need for these skills. Also uh, practicing different languages. So um, 
I personally would advise a lot of people to, to go into this training, even if they don't want to pursue a career in uh, an online or virtual exchange, but the skills that they gain from the facilitation training are, re are highly uh, demanded right, right, uh, right now in the market. Thank you very much. So facilitation training is a central component that actually is recognized again with an open badge by the European Commission. It is recognized if you take the, 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 the full process, you have a United Nations recognition. So it's an interesting possibility apart from Erasmus Plus virtual exchange. But then uh, putting myself or yourself in the shoes of a professor or a youth uh, worker, that uh, doesn't want uh, to, to use a ready-made exchange, but you want to design your own exchange. We have thought about this also, so I'm giving now the word to Sara uh, Pitarello to present us uh, with this uh, option, this other option with the training to design a virtual exchange. Okay, thank you Fabio and I am delighted to address you on that today, um, especially because um, I'm an, uh, this is a great opportunity being offered by um, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange right now, enabling you to acquire the, um, um, the most important elements and uh, understanding the rationale behind virtual exchange. So, in case you are interested in developing your own ad hoc virtual exchange project, what we define as uh, TEP, uh, the acronym means uh, Transnational Virtual, Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Project. Uh, the training is an essential step um, because uh, you will first become familiar with uh, the basics of virtual exchange, uh, both uh, through the training for higher education institutions, as well as uh, through the training developed for uh, youth uh, workers. Um, there is a main distinction here because on the training for youth workers is um, um, conceived and developed as a unique training course, a unique training path, uh, just on a um, one track course, uh, quite condensed, um, which merges both a basic and an advanced course altogether. The next one will be in September, will start in September. Whereas in the case of you, um, higher education institutions, uh, the course is divided into two uh, steps, so a basic course and an, an advanced one. In case um, I mean you have you as higher education institutions already have an idea, even a rough idea in mind about what you would like to develop, and you have a partner already available and willing to commit um, itself to work. Uh, with you, you can skip the basic and already uh, start with the advanced training. In case you don't have a, a partner at all, we also offer partnering fairs, usually at the end of the basic training, enabling you to um, illustrate your idea and to find a partner. So this is also an opportunity you may have. Um, also, the training for um, higher education institutions is running uh, in autumn, so you can already uh, express your uh, willingness and your interest in participating in the training right now on the hub, on the, on the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange portal. Now, moving on to the next uh, slide, let's briefly uh, summarize the main benefits. So, why you should take the time to go through the training. Uh, well, you should consider that this opportunity is mainly um, designed and conceived for you uh, to respond the best to your own needs and expectations and targets. Because I, I, like, um, I also like to um, illustrate virtual exchange as a very flexible opportunity. In case you want to start with and um, uh, sort of uh, through um, a very, a very uh, brief and quick uh, example of how it works, then the ready-made approach is the best for you because you everything is already set up and the only thing you have to do is either to promote it through uh, your uh, young participants or through students, or you can embrace and integrate this activity within your own program. But in case uh, you want to go a little bit further and you have specific needs you want to respond to 
and in case you want to add to um, your program an additional part through virtual exchange then a tab is what suits you the best why so in the case of the staff um, well, um, I mean, the, the most important, the crucial aspect is that you may understand the rationale behind virtual exchange and experience what students, in the case of higher education institutions, or what young participants experience. Why? Because during the training, uh, we, we use the same platform, uh, the same modalities which students and young or participants uh, use through uh, virtual exchange, through the ready-made approaches. And then uh, with a special reference to higher education, uh, there is a focus on, a high focus on innovative, the innovative side of this educational approach. Uh, uh, usually, uh, we think that virtual exchange and everything going online is based on the technology, but actually, uh, the technology here is just serving uh, the educational side and the youth organizational um, aspect. Uh, and the training will explain that to you. Another important part is that you can become familiar with the tools of e-learning, uh, which are highly exploited right now, and you can respond to specific learning outcomes or to the specific needs of your uh, youth organizations. Um, when, once you have set up your own uh, tip, you will count on the support of, of the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange team to implement it and to, um, uh, to follow it step by step. And also you can count on uh, the EVE trained facilitators in case you have no facilitators available and none of you have uh, taken part in the facilitators training. We also have the EVE facilitators training, which who can help you with the facilitated and synchronous sessions. Bear in mind, and I should like, uh, I would like to focus on the fact that virtual exchange is a component that you may add to already existing activities, and the virtual component usually um, add the synchronous side on it, meaning that usually we recommend two to three um, synchronous sessions with trained facilitators uh, to enhance your 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 program or activity even more. Uh, let's briefly summarize the main features of TEPS in both higher education and youth. Um, so first of all, in the case of higher education, they can be transdisciplinary or they can focus on a single subject. They can be bilateral or multilateral, meaning that you can work with just a single partner or with many partners. In the case of higher education institutions, you may implement a tab uh, with um, involving the same level of students in different institutions or different levels of students. Think about a, a tab on uh, journalism involving um, master students in one university and um, bachelor students in another university. They can have a different duration, meaning that you are the ones who decide how long they should last. They can be targeted to students or youth um, participants, youth, or even to staff or youth workers, meaning that you can conceive a tap even as part of a, an ongoing um, I mean, professional development strategy. And they can be linked to the specific needs of the institution, of the youth organization, or of the course you are targeting. Um, you should consider them as a sort of um, ad hoc activities um, suiting your needs and your aims uh, the best. This is just um, a brief ex summary of what they, they, they are and they look like. And just to conclude, I would like to briefly mention a couple of examples. You're all familiar with the Erasmus Plus activities, mobility activities in particular, and I'm here referring to both Erasmus within Europe and even outside Europe. Bear in mind that Erasmus Plus virtual exchange is mainly targeting the southern Mediterranean. But um, this is not uh, the, the um, 
um, the unique way of working through virtual exchange. You may also consider other partners outside this basin, provided that you have at least one European or one Southern Mediterranean partner. So the basic is um, bilateral uh, cooperation with either within Europe or with the Southern Mediterranean countries. You may also consider integrating virtual exchange in already existing or future projects, uh, even as seminars or winter or summer schools in the case of higher education institutions. Uh, focusing on higher education institutions, so you may even conceive uh, TEP as a way to innovate or integrate your educational offer with joint and flexible curricular uh, curricula based on a challenged uh, learning program. Um, or, as I was mentioning before, this can also be part of a staff development strategy, especially uh, if you are targeting uh, uh, crucial moments like, like uh, the period that we have just uh, been facing. You may also conceive uh, um, virtual exchange as a way to integrate or um, online placements. I'm uh, specifically mentioning uh, um, the activity being carried out by higher education institutions. And since physical placements can be tricky right now, uh, you may also conceive a TAP or even a ready made approach uh, to uh, currently uh, replace physical placements um, now that they can no longer take place. As a whole, uh, this is a very useful way to support, uh, to um, um, enhance physical mobility even more. So I would like just to conclude by saying that virtual exchange as a tap opportunity is a very useful uh, way to support physical mobility, especially at a time when it may be restricted or, or more difficult to take place. So, or even as a way to further boost physical mobility. And I think this is all. Perfect, thank you very much, okay. Sarah. So you got uh, also some examples of uh, how a TEP can look like. And uh, so the logic here is very simple. So the, the first choice is whether to go for something ready-made, pre-designed, or to design something yourself, which takes a bit more effort. You need to go through training, but then, uh, you can really, in this case, decide that you will be working, you and your students, in collaboration with the professor you've been working with in another country, your, your lifetime partner or some other partner. But in this case, you decide actually the structure of the course, the structure of the project and so on. So it's a, it's a different level of, <clears throat> I would say, agency. Um, now here, you can see a bit a summary of what you can do and when i say you i'm talking to a typical stereotypical university professor or youth worker forgive us for some uh, level of generalization so you can see there we have the social circles which are short appetizers which can be also a great way for youth organizations to just provide some internationalization opportunities for your stakeholders you have connect and cultural encounters, similar again, but with some differences. You have the debate exchanges that we have not mentioned and since we don't have a lot of time, which is something similar, but focusing on debating skills. So also here students can sign in directly. It's also great for youth organizations. And in, in, this, in this modality, you have debating teams being created and then actually uh, running online debates uh, one against the other in sort of Oxford style debate and then you have the trainings so the the virtual exchange training that is the propedeutic to to then develop your own tap and the facilitators training we I hope all of this was clear and I would like to ask you uh, for questions uh, I don't know if we lost some questions in the meantime um, whatever question or doubt please feel free to ask we know this is a lot to digest but in order to be flexible we wanted to provide many opportunities i think there was a question about uh, uh, agneska was asking if the facilitator is leading the cultural encounter and the answer is yes well the facilitator is leading the sessions 
right, uh, Rawan? We can say that the facilitator is leading the, the working cultural encounter, right? We prefer to say that they lead their own groups, the participants lead their own groups, but the facilitator facilitates the sessions. So, yes. All right. So, in, in any case, uh, in, in a course like Cultural Encounter, there is a syllabus, like uh, Marta was asking. The syllabus can be seen uh, by the professors. The syllabus cannot be modified because the course has been already designed, and this is the difference with respect to the TEP, uh, but so that the, the, the professor knows what the students are going to use in terms of content, and then the facilitator is taking care of facilitating the, the sessions led by the students actually, on the, depending on the preference of the students. Another question by Agnieszka, uh, when groups apply, do you pair the groups with another one? So there is, for example, Poland and Tunisia in the cultural encounter course, or is there more countries? And do we have influence on the countries you choose? Rawan or Amani, if you want to answer this. Um, okay, so, um for social circles and the connect program uh, we try to maintain a balance in the virtual rooms in such a way that the participants would be coming uh, from um, different countries so we cannot have let's say 20 uh, from like the capacity of the room is already 12 participants so it would be a groups uh, between 8 and 12 people um, so these 12 people cannot be like six from one country and four from another and just one or two from um, <laughs> a remaining third uh, country. So we try to make it very diverse. Um, uh, so, and the, main, mainly we don't put it, let's say there's no personal choice. Uh, the participants themselves have a virtual scheduler. They put, um, they pick among the options uh, during which they would like to take the session and the virtual scheduler is going to uh, use this, uh, let's say, formula to put them in a time slot that they have chosen with people not coming from the same country as them or the institution as them. So the likelihood of having two um, students coming from the same university attending in the same room is zero. They cannot be in the same room. Um, so, so, and these are not bi bilateral, so these are multilateral, so your students, your 20 students will go in 20 groups uh, composed of uh, exactly. ten, 10 other young people, each, 10 other students each, from ideally, typically 10 different or 9 different uh, counters. If uh, you want to run a, a collaboration like Poland and Tunisia, if you have a partner in Tunisia, for example, with which you have already run a capacity building project, a number of other activities, we have already an established collaboration. In, in that case, uh, the best thing is to design a TEP, because in the TEP, you decide who is your partner, you take the training, both yourself and ideally your, your partner as well, so your, the other professor or, or youth uh, coordinator, and in that case, uh, it can be bilateral, it can be multilateral, we there are TEPs with six or seven or even more partners, but typically, we, we advise to start small, but like two or three organizations. And there are TEPs also only in Europe, so you, you don't have to engage, uh, um, by definition, uh, a partner from the South Med. Right, Sara? You, you have, we have yes, I, yeah, um, for example, you could even consider, we, we have currently European University alliances are thinking about um, developing TEPs for their students within their networks. In this case, is, it will be a multilateral network. We also have bilateral examples. So I'm thinking about a very successful TEP uh, um, between, um, I mean, uh, the Graz University and uh, a an, uh, Romanian and Hungarian University. It is three partners on history, and that involves doctoral students. Um, so, uh, and this is a very uh, good example because it shows you that uh, the activity cannot be limited and can't, um, uh, is not limited to a single group of students, you may target uh, several layers. Um, another good example is a pre-mobility activity. Um, in this case, uh, um, this is very useful for enhancing and promoting mobility even further because usually students after 
uh, signing up for this step. Uh, at least this is what happened at the University of Padova. They have ended up in applying for um, physical Erasmus yeah. Plus exchange. So this is again a way to show how virtual exchange can support and um, integrate physical mobility yeah. and not substitute it. Yeah, there, there is, I was talking to a professor who is thinking of organizing a TEP around the summer school, who is normally taking place every year in the summer. This year, the summer school cannot take place. And instead of having the usual Zoom meetings where people talk and, you know, the ones who talk more talk and the other ones just listen, he is trying to, to see if this can be done because this is a bilateral summer school with two universities to see if this can be done through virtual exchange. So it's just a different way more interculturally sensitive way of doing collaboration. I think there is another question by Agnieszka. Uh, I think this is for the ready-made exchange. Any specific number of participants uh, that professor has to organize, has to uh, bring, I think, no? Mm -hmm. Yes, so for the Connect program, the minimum uh, for, let's say, the first pilot is 20 to 25 students. So the professor should uh, have uh, these students ready to, um, to have a course integrated as well. But for social circles, there is no, let's say, binding uh, number that they should bring um, because um, it runs through individual applications from the students. So this is not a partnership. But they, if, if they would like to have a partnership, we can arrange that. But the, there wouldn't be any coordination material like the Connect program. You can just know whether your students attended or not um, if you give us like the number and uh, their contact details. And for such encounters, there's no limit. So there's no minimum, no maximum, as many students as you want to, to bring in, you're more than welcome. But, but just to give you an idea, Agnieszka, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to come in with uh, three students, uh, nor with uh, 200 students as the first time. So normally, the advice I hear is to start with some 20, 25, 30 students, and then you can grow up. And there are examples of professors, for example, from the UK, a professor who is engaging, I think, is in Connect uh, 100 and something students every year. So this is also something that can become part of your of your course if, if you like it. Uh, there is a question by Wo. Uh, can you give more examples of project for youth organizations with more details? I think you are referring to the TEPs, to, to these projects, because actually youth organization, you can join, if you look at the slide now, you can, you, you exactly so young people can join social circles can directly join cultural encounters and debate exchange but about TEPS Sarah you have some yes uh, um, some I have yeah uh, I would like to mention two examples one is a very structured and the other one is less structured uh, so uh, the first example I would like to mention is a very recent example taken from Italy uh, we have um, um, an Italian youth organization active in the field of theater. And they had uh, their main target and their main aim was to open up to an international environment. They had no idea at all about a virtual exchange. And um, in that case, I mean, uh, the sequence was not the normal one because usually we advise um, youth organizations to take part in the training first, but since it was the COVID time and we had just developed a very huge uh, tap involving uh, both higher education institutions as well as youth organizations, we asked them uh, to take part on it. Uh, the, the, the subject was, uh, um, I mean, on uh, transversal competencies and mainly critical thinking and reflection on what was going on for young people in that difficult time. And uh, they were, um, uh, the, the young people who participated in, in that were so um, happy and enthusiastic about this activity that they, in the end, decided to um, um, re re restructure all the activity within a, a performance on the stage and they are working now on on involving their um, um, 
uh, this, the young uh, people working with them and uh, uh, for this uh, youth organization and they want to make them experience what they have experienced themselves uh, by by performing uh, on a stage what they experience and this is what I call an unstructured example because uh, as I was saying before the sequence was not the the normal one. Then we have uh, I can I can share with you um, on later on by email in in case any of you is interested in deepening this example. We have a very well structured example from Finland of a youth organization working in the field of cult cultural competences, and they decided to integrate a youth exchange um, 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 a tab for a youth organization within their their um, activities uh, by enhancing um, especially um, the the opportunity for Finnish uh, students uh, Finnish uh, young young participants sorry um, uh, because as, as you might well understand uh, there is also a different uh, cultural attitude to virtual exchange de depending on the culture uh, you, you you come from and Finnish uh, young people are um, can uh, find it more difficult to open up and speak frankly online so the activity they developed was for them to enhance their cultural competencies for them to be uh, to feel at ease uh, while participating in in online uh, virtual exchange um, I will now uh, give you all my email address in case you are willing to um, to deepen this um, this aspect a bit more yep. thank you very much and as I was writing <laughs> we will share the links in the follow-up message also to the handbook for youth organization and to the handbook for international relation officers in universities where we have uh, listed some examples and some explanations of, of TEPS. Be mindful of the time and since I still we still have 40 people with us I would like just to share with you the last slide which is a bit of advice on what you could do next you've seen what you could do with Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange but really after this webinar uh, what can you do so the first thing is to go on the hub and to check uh, the opportunities so we explain to you try to explain to you the existing opportunities and uh, applying or at least expressing interest is very easy so let's say that you like uh, the you think the ready, you want to know more about the ready-made exchanges but you still have a doubt so you just go there you go on the connect or the cultural encounters and you express interest and then somebody like Amani or Rawan will be contacting you to see if this is your is is your activity and so feel free to feel free to do that feel free also to register to the newsletter so you can get uh, you can you will get uh, any update and it might be opening up new activities between now and the end of the year actually due to the high interest so stay tuned on that as i was saying uh, please use the handbook for youth organizations we have also some templates there you, that you can use for example to promote the activities without uh, having to write an email just to translate it and use that text to spread the news among your students or your, your young people then uh, next Monday, as every second Monday, we organize drop-in sessions. So on the Hub, uh, you can find the link uh, in the events uh, to attend those sections. Uh, and if you have some questions or some specific case to, to post to us. And finally, apart from the emails that you have seen appearing in the chat, if you have general questions or you think that you are ready then, and you want to know more or something specific, feel free to write to erasmusvirtual at unimed.net. Uh, I think I have again the, the hub that I wanted to show you because actually everything we said is there. Exactly, thank you very much, Sarah. In the resources area of the hub, you can find some time. We su I suggest you, you take some time to explore the resources and, and uh, you try, as I was saying before, to apply if you're interested as soon as possible during July without waiting September uh, and actually I mean uh, this is uh, you will see it takes some time at the very beginning um, to, to understand things there and uh, but especially if you go for a for a ready-made exchange then you will see that uh, you will sort of save some teaching time and your students will go through a 
through a, a, a very interesting experience and rewarding experience whilst if you go for the training and the TEPs, so you'll be able to actually design a, an innovative experience yourself. Uh, thank you, Camilla, for your participation. I see already some thanks, uh, even a high five. Thank you. Whoa. Very good. Uh, I don't know if uh, there are other questions, uh, but in case it's already 10 past four and uh, you have all the ways to contact us. So we, would, we will check how many participa additional participants we will have from Poland. So please. Uh, try to be active so the, the the Polish community can be more represented into in within the numbers of uh, Eve. Thank you Magda, actually we are doing our best and uh, I think that's it, a lot of information but uh, I think we were able to show you a bit the way to get engaged and again don't worry if uh, you're not sure about one one specific thing just give it a try and if you're not going the right way we will direct you to another opportunity so i don't know if my colleagues want to say something want to give a final word or just a goodbye just um just that brief <laughs> i mean uh, i would like to invite all of you uh, even if you are willing to take part in a ready-made uh, exchange to take the opportunity of of um join the tra of joining the training i think it is a very a very interesting opportunity uh, to experience directly what the other side so students and young uh, participants experience so in any case i would i would encourage you to take part in that um, it is a, indeed a great opportunity because you also become part of a TAP community and you can also share your ideas and what is going on. You can learn something new about any, any other initiative uh, going on on virtual exchange. So I think it is a great option, no matter uh, which way uh, you would like to, uh, to follow uh, through a virtual exchange. Yeah, very good point. Rawan, Amani. Yes, I first want to answer to Marta's question, where she's asking if they need to sign any partnership agreement. If you need a report on the uh, progress of your students, yes. Otherwise, you don't have to sign it. And it's a really general MOU showing what we are going to offer you and what you're going to, uh, to offer like your students. Um, I would like to thank everybody for being here in this webinar. And we, uh, we really would love to see you and your students in our courses. And we're there for you to help you and support you if you need any kind of support and how to integrate your courses and how to get your students involved in it. So um, uh, I personally encourage my students so they, they start hesitant with the first course, but then they start jumping into different, to, to, to different courses because that they like the experience. So it's worth trying with your students and you'll see the difference and you'll uh, see the impact on their uh, progress actually. Um, I think it's my turn. So uh, I just wanted to also reply to the last question on um, the partnership agreement. So it really depends on the program that you are going to pick. If you are for, in, for social circles, you don't have to sign any document unless you would like to receive um, coordination materials like uh, Rowan said. And for the Connect program, um, the actually the the MOU, which is the Memorandum of Understanding, that uh, understanding that you would sign, comes at a later stage after the application, after you apply, after uh, you get a chance to have this uh, application screening call, and uh, we agree together on the terms and the number, the tentative number, and the integrated course, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, the last step is actually signing the MOU right before the session starts. So, um, so yeah, we do sign it for the Connect program. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to just um, send them even after this webinar. And um, we encourage you to have a look on the hub to spend some time um, to know which activity is more suitable to you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, last thing, we need to thank uh, the Polish National Agency for gathering the community and also for um, remaining available. If you have questions, even in Polish, feel free to ask them and they will report back to us and ask us. So actually, they have been fantastic in helping us with reaching both uh, universities and youth organizations. So 
Nothing else. Thank you very much. Uh, you will receive an email with the recording and feel free to share it with your colleagues who haven't been, been able to attend. And have a very nice evening and see you online. Bye-bye.